I am Will. Thank you very much for joining me this week for another great training episode. And this one was very interesting because I have been asked, how do we make our thumbnails? Because obviously making YouTube thumbnails are important. And I figured it ties into the training that we're doing because every single thumbnail you have seen on our channel has been made here in Keynote. I've done every single one of them, and I wanted to show you how I'm doing it. In fact, I'm going to make this one for this episode. So I just wanted to look through some of our ones that we have created, but all of them are done right here inside of Keynote. So it's just basically taking stuff from the web and moving things over and then just cutting them out using a lot of the removing the background effect, the alpha channels, and just using our different text. So I just wanted to go through all the different things that we normally do for these episodes. So we're going to create a brand new keynote. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is what we the rules are for a thumbnail, because I think it's important. So I'm going to go to Safari, and I have a little guideline here that they want you to use, and this is from one of the websites. But basically, they want you to use a thumbnail size of 1280 by 720, which is regular at 16 by 9 widescreen aspect ratio. The thumbnail size has to be a minimum of 640 pixels wide, and the thumbnail image should be under 2 megabytes. Because Keynote, you uh, most of them are under that size. And I store them all in one document, so every single one is here that I've done since we started here. If I go back to the Think Different podcast days, you know, one of our first episodes, uh, it was basically here where I kind of recreated a lot of our, um, our maps and ways and a whole bunch of different things. Some of the text has changed over the years. Uh, and some things are definitely are messed up. But, you know, if I look down to where we are now, we try to make it as very simple as possible. Let's now make a new slide. So I'm here in the slide viewer. If I just right click, go to a new slide, I'll create a new slide here. I just use a white background. That's our, our template theme, typically for most videos. Uh, and I have all the text here, but I'm gonna remove all the text and we'll move that over. So first off is I'm gonna be using the keynote icon and myself as the thing. Now, the good thing is in the past, I already have a lot of stuff I've used. And this is one of our more popular ones where we always hold the actual item. So I'm going to copy that. So actually, I have two subjects here. I have our Apple one-to-one -one lanyard and I have our face. So you can see they're all different items. And going back to some of the things we've done before is we have grouped things together to keep them the same. So I want really the this icon and this icon of my head to be identical. And I'm going to just right click and then there's an option called group. And now when I just move this, they're sized together. That makes things much easier. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to copy. I'm going to scroll down to this thumbnail. I'm going to go to paste. And as you can see, it brings it right over. Now, because sometimes I want to be on this side instead, obviously my hand is different. So what I'm going to do is format. And there's a foot feature. And as you can see, there you go. It just flips it around. The problem with that, though, is you can see the Apple one-to-one -one is messed up. This is where a group doesn't always work out. So I'm going to right-click, ungroup, and then I'm just going to do my myself, my um, emoji, and let's go back to arrange. And you have to go into arrange to do this, and then flip, and there we go. And that way now the Apple one-to-one -one and this are together. Now I have to regroup them, and then I'm going to move this over. Great. And I might make it a little smaller just to, you know, because you don't need myself to be that big present here. And there you go. As you can see, it snaps too, uh, which makes things a lot easier. The next thing is getting the keynote icon. Now, I could go back and just do what I just did where I copied something, but I want to do something a little different. There is a way to grab any application icon built in your machine. So if we go to applications, every single icon that's here, you can actually pull directly from Finder. How do you do that? If I go to Keynote and I go show package contents, a lot of people don't even know this exists. This is where all the apps information is stored. Where Windows, it could be all over the place, where inside of a Mac, it's all in one spot. So if I open contents, there's a section called resources and Apple icons. I'm gonna double click this just to open it. It opens a preview, but look, it opens different quality of the icons look there because remember when you look at keynote there's different quality of all the icons so this is where it's stored in every single app i would basically say almost every single app i'm going to drag this directly to keynote and boom there it is it's right there and then i'm just going to move it right over i'll resize it 
And there we go. And there is the icon. So you don't even have to even go to the web and find it. It's already got the background removed, which makes that much easier. Next thing we're going to do is because I'm making a YouTube thumbnail and I have to describe that, I want to grab the YouTube icon. Now I'm going to go and I already did a search for this, but you can go on the web and find any icon. YouTube actually does allow you to grab their icons as part of their marketing. You're allowed to use them. So I'm going to go right here. I found one right here. I'm just going to go right click and I'm going to hit save image to downloads, which then puts that image and I see it bounce down here and there's the icon. I'm going to go here, click on it, drag it in, and there we go. And now we're going to just make this, uh, you know, we're going to decide on where I'm going to put this. I might even uh, fix it up. I'm going to go here to where our text boxes are, but I could just copy and paste. I'm using Command C and Command V here, put it right here. And then I could say how to make a YouTube thumbnail. in keynote there we go and then i could just move this down here uh and, and our stuff is really quite simple we really don't go over the top with some of these things and then I, maybe instead of a white background maybe i want to do something else so i would like to go on our youtube page and then i'm just going to grab like something like this where it has all of our icons and i'm going to do like a screenshot so what i want to do is there's a few ways you can do this but i want to give you the easiest one uh it is going to be using a command keystroke it's command shift three. And what that did is it just made a screenshot right down here on the bottom and then it's gonna disappear. And then what that does, it saves it directly to the desktop as a default. And we'll see that disappear in a second. My arrow's on it, so it's kind of moving around. So what I'm gonna do now is that, that just created a screenshot of the entire display. Now you can do another one where it's command shift and four, but I'm gonna move my arrow on the screen and then you'll see my arrow just turned into like a bullseye. And that is because now I can click and drag a field. And then when I let go, it creates a screenshot that way. So there's two ways I just showed you how to make a screenshot. You could have something on your screen. You could do command shift three, which does the entire display or command shift four. Uh, I'm going to do my mission control, swipe over. And now we have to bring that and I want that to be in the background. So I'm going to go grab finder. I'm going to go into my desktop. I'm going to take the second screenshot because it only I don't want the whole display. Obviously, then I have to do some cropping. So I'm just going to take this part of it and I'm just going to drag it somewhere on the outside because I don't want to drag it on top or hide anything. I want to keep it like very noticeable. There we go. And now I'm going to move this around. It's going to cover up everything, which is fine. I'm going to be fixing that in a second. So there we go. Now, final step is I'm going to put this backwards. So there's two options in a range. There's back and backward. Back will automatically put it directly as the most furthest back part of all the items that are on the screen, all the uh, objects that are on the screen. Backward goes each individual step. So as I see, if I do each individual step or I go forward each individual step, it's only going in a certain spot. But since this is going to be the backdrop, I'm going to hit back. So now it's behind it, but it's so hard to read the text. So I'm going to go to style and there's an opacity and I'm going to knock that down a lot like this. That way we can still read everything here. Here's a YouTube icon. Here's me showing how to make a YouTube thumbnail and keynote. Uh, and I really am happy with this. Honestly, like I said, I don't go crazy on this. I might just fix a little bit of this guy. He might be just needing a little bit bit of space there we go by the way you can go arrow using your arrows you can go up and down like ruler by ruler which is really great so that way you can be very specific where you want to be because sometimes the snapping is is a little too much so i'm going to go up a little bit there we go i'm going to just move this over a little bit there great and i'm pretty happy with that honestly uh, so i'm really happy with this uh look of it i think this is going to be our thumbnail for this video and i just want to show you real quickly that you can make thumbnails in you in keynote or even powerpoint whatever i don't care what you're making it in i just think it's very simple and a lot of times people will use photoshop and other items that to be honest i think are a little over the top and i don't think we need to i think we already have simple already built-in solutions that could do this and then the last step i have to do is export this so i'm going to go to file export two and then there's images now 
When I do that, by default, it wants to export all slides or from 1 to 209. I have that many thumbnails. That just shows how many videos we have. But I only need the last one, so I'm going to change it from 1 to 209. JPEG high quality is fine. It works perfectly fine with that. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to create a uh, folder for this. So in our Think Different folder here, I have a new folder. Let's now call this Making YouTube Thumbnail. Great. Create that. Save as. Now I have to make the name for this. So I'm kind of going to do the same name, Making YouTube Thumbnail in Keynote. Sometimes Word, I know sometimes save as when you're saving files, the wording can be a little long, but I think it's a great way for you to search for everything. So I'm going to hit export, and then I'm going to go directly to Finder. Let's go to the Think Different Podcasts. I just keep everything in the same spot, even with the old podcast icon. And if I double click, and then I open it up, and there it is. And looks great. I'm happy with it. Again, it's a little big on this screen because it's a very high quality display, but in reality, this is going to be no bigger than this. So that's why it looks a little pixelated, but that's the real size it's going to be. And, and it looks great. So I'm very happy with it. So I hope you guys took something away from this episode of making thumbnails and how we create them. And I just thought it's a tra training video as well. So thank you guys. Please subscribe and like and give us any kind of feedback below. We will respond to every comment. I do appreciate it. And I love every single one of you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.